Thank you for tuning in to another episode of InRange. This is another episode in the uh, What If Lever Gun Project. Yeah. Those that are astute might notice that this is absolutely not a lever gun. Oh. And that's kind of right. not a lever wow. gun. <laughs> but kind of is, kind of is, and more like a repeater. Yeah, this is only a, an honorary lever gun by virtue of having a lever, not by actually being a fast gun to shoot. But if you've seen the uh, first episode of this, that's the 1860 Spencer, and some people were asking why not the Spencer, and we kind of proved why not the Spencer. But the Spencer was officially adopted by the military. Right. As a repeater in 5650. Yes. Yep. Um, at the end of the Civil War, the U.S. Cavalry continued to use the 1865 pattern Spencer as its standard rifle. Yep. And it held seven rounds in a tube in the buttstock yep. and was ostensibly a repeater that you'd have to cock the hammer, run the lever, cycle the hammer, and then fire the gun. You know, one of the advantages of this as a cavalry carbine mm -hmm. is the fact that because the magazine's in the buttstock, you could shorten the barrel quite a lot and yes. not lose any magazine capacity. Nope. With the other lever actions that we're going to look at, the Winchesters, the Henrys, if you shorten the barrel, you also reduce the magazine capacity. That's true, although the carbine versions of those lever guns still had 10 rounds, which was three more true. than seven. However, they were also far less powerful. True. Yeah. But the, the real fighting gun of the time was the 1873 trapdoor rifle. Right. Today we have a carbine, and the reason we have a carbine is to compare carbines against carbines. And there's other reasons to talk about that as well. The 5650 cartridge, the 5650 when 5656 when it first came out, was kind of an intermediate cartridge. Yeah. Yeah, it was a, a definitely a step up over pistol rounds at the time, but it was also definitely a step down from proper rifle cartridges. So the primary fighting cartridge of the time was the 4570. Right. Still around today, still popular today, it's still mm -hmm. a very powerful, uh, potent cartridge. Um, it was chambered in a number of different chamberings. They had the 4570 which mm -hmm. was typically the rifle load, and that was a 500 grain bullet. Right. It was a very, very potent cartridge. What you've got here with this designation is bullet diameter, 45, uh, powder charge in grains, 70, mm -hmm. and then bullet weight in grains, 500. Right. But that turned out to be a little too harsh for a lot of people. Especially in a carbine. And remember, back in those days, the amount of ammunition that were provided to these guys to actually train with was extremely minimal. I like think one. It, seriously, there are instances of which they had like one round to train with in the yeah. field. So they'd be issued this much ammunition for their fighting force, and you have like three rounds for training. No joke. Yeah. Um, in, in fact, this is part of why Gatling guns didn't see greater use in the American cavalry in the West, mm -hmm. is they had no ammunition for them. Yep. And that does play into one of the questions we have to ask during the what if lever gun project, because the lever gun increases the rate of fire, it doesn't decrease it. Right. And supply and demand and all that is one of the things that have to be considered, but that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about the mechanical capabilities of the gun and what they could have brought to the battlefield. Right. So in the carbine load, the 45-70-500 is beyond teeth shattering to fire. It is awful. It's awful in a rifle and it's awful in a carbine and marksmanship across the board suffered as a result. Yeah. So they landed up down, down charging the cartridge to a 45 55 405. So it's a 45 caliber card, uh, projectile, 55 grains of powder and a 405 grain bullet. Diminishes the actual recoil dramatically. Obviously it diminishes the range to some degree, but firing that in the carbine turned out to be a far more palatable experience. Right. It was also so much more palatable that it actually ended up becoming sort of de facto and definitive, and most guys just wanted 45, 55, and even in their rifles, because that 45, 70 was just awful. And if you have mediocre to poor training, you're actually going to be more effective with the weaker cartridge because you're much more likely to hit something instead of developing this horrendous flinch that means that you never hit your target at all. So what we have today is we have a replica 1860 Spencer, yep. uh, chambered in the 5650 uh, center fire. This is a original. This is now an 1884. 1884 has a little bit slightly different rear sight. Mm -hmm. um, it does have a modified front sight. Someone in the past, this gun's been around for a long, long time. Someone put a little bead sight on here. This does not change this test. This is just a little bead sight. But this is an original 1884 carbine. You can actually see the date on there. And what we're going to do is put these against each other because this was the standard fighting rifle, but that was a repeater. Why were there not more of those than these? And one of the interesting questions is, coming out of the Civil War, the cavalry adopted these. Yes. And then they changed, they dropped this, and went back to a single shot carbine. So what we're going to hope to find out today, and I honestly don't know what the answer is, is maybe come at least to a little taste of why did that happen? Yeah. And so we have a couple different things we're going to do. You have seven rounds in yours, and I've got, of course, one round in mine. <laughs> but the fighting, t the, uh, the tactics of the time dictated really two different mechanisms. Right. The cavalry would, would go to a location, dismount. They didn't typically fight from their horse. They fought right. off their horse. They were often dragoons, not, ca not true cavalry. And then they would form a skirmish line, and that was usually either firing literally from offhand, which is standing, or from kneeling. Or if there was a fighting position, like they would form a, a, a fighting a hole, they would actually entrench in, mm -hmm. and there would be a position they would fight from. So that's a prone position. Yeah. So what I think we need to test today is how fast can you get seven rounds off on a target, which by the way is only going to be at 25 yards, this is not a marksmanship drill. How long, how long does it take me to get seven rounds off on a target 
from a cartridge belt, which would have been one of the ways they handled their ammunition at the time. Mm -hmm. And then we'll time that and see how much faster the repeater is to the single shot. All right. But then we'll take it to the fighting hole, which is prone. That might be different. And see what happens. So stay tuned. You ready? All right, so one thing I think we should point out is you have an interesting tactical single point sling on that gun. Oh, yeah. You know, it's funny, nothing new under the sun. No, there really isn't. This really was the uh, cavalry sling. This is a reproduction, but it is a single point sling with a giant hook, which by the way, tends to get you caught up sometimes. But you can disconnect it, unlimber the gun, and this thing just hangs off you exactly in practice, the same as a single point sling that you see today. Yep. So funny, nothing changes under the sun, and that is legit stuff. It would fit either the 1873 carbine or the Spencer, or any carbine that had what they called a saddle ring. That's, That's exactly why you that see is. that ring. Yep. And then boom, and there it is, single point sling. You can fire it with it connected, mm -hmm. or you can disconnect it. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna start off, you're gonna load seven rounds on this. I'm yep. gonna get off to the, behind the camera, and then you're gonna fire at 25 yards and see how quickly you can get those seven rounds off. And then we'll do the same thing with the trapdoor. And I'm gonna do it without the sling, because the one downside here is this is left -hand, or right-handed only. Yeah, no really reason to have that on there. Yep. All right, let me get off there, and you can go ahead and load up. All right. One. Five, six, seven. There we go. All right, Ian. Yeah, you've got seven rounds and you're repeating 1860 Spencer. I've got a timer here. Go ahead and make it to low ready. All right, and I'm starting with the gun completely empty. Yes, just like I will with the trapdoor. Are you ready? All right. Stand by. Twenty-seven point four one. Whew! This thing is slow, but it might still be faster than a trapdoor. Let's find out. Ready? All right. So we're twenty-five yards from the target. I have my eighteen seventy-three slash eighteen eighty-four trapdoor carbine here. And I'll be loading from the cartridge belt with my forty-five fifty-five four hundred five cartridges. Cartridge belts and cartridge boxes were the thing of the day because the chances of you just losing them if you were holding onto them was great, especially in the stress of combat. So for this first run, I'm going to try and load straight from the belt, which would have been really one of the prescribed tactics of the time. So I'm going to get the low ready. I'm going to start just like Ian did, empty gun, and we're going to find out how fast this is. I have a feeling you're going to smash me with that repeater. We'll find out. Are you ready? Yes. Stand by. Four. Carl's pretty fast at this trapdoor thing compared to most. Okay. Six. Last round. All right. 35, 72. Not that much slower. No, not that much slower. Wow, it'll be interesting when we go to prone. Yeah. All right, so here was what we got going on. We're at seven, we're at 25 yards, and this is gonna be from a prone fighting position. Normally this would be an entrenched position that you dug in from, but in reality, of course, we're just simulating that with this box and this little uh, rest. But uh, with the Spencer, you would start pretty much with the seven rounds already in the magazine. We're just showing um, Ian go ahead and load up here. With the Traptor carbine, there's a different manual of arms that I'm gonna describe when I get to my position. So we're gonna do this on the timer. And again, this is seven rounds, uh, seven hits at 25 yards from a fighting position. All right, Ian. Are you ready? Ready. Stand by. Right. 
Think I'm empty. 26 I'm seconds. Empty. Let me come talk on there. All right. Whew. All right, so that was interesting. Actually, that was one second faster than your offhand. Huh. Now, probably because you could get a faster sight picture, maybe? Yeah. But it didn't seem like being off, being prone was a big problem. Not so much, but one thing I was doing was I was, I wasn't, uh, I was keeping my back hand actually on top of the action here, um, with, with my cheek actually resting on my hand, and then using my right hand to cock the hammer, and my left hand to actually cycle the action. Hmm. It was a weird, weird way to hold the gun, but it was what seemed to work best prone at close range with this thing. One thing we should note is that with the Spencer is that if your magazine had run dry, you could still single load. Yes. So you would not have had to take the tube out and actually fill it that way. You could have just gone to single shot if you needed to. Right. So if right you shot there. your seven rounds, you could have gone to just single rounds. Yep. So interesting advantage. Let's go ahead and get to the trap door. All right. All right. So now I'm in my entrenched fighting position. I've already used my stupid little bayonet shovel thing to dig a hole. That's the topic for another day. We've got our firing position. So the, the actual manual of arms at the time was to actually leave your ammunition out near you. You were not supposed to be dynamic. This was a static fighting hole. So you'd put the ammunition to your side. You might even take off your belt or your cartridge belt and just leave it here, or even leave loose ammunition near you. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the belt off, which is always a trick. And I'm gonna set that over here to the side. And to make things a little faster on myself, I'm actually gonna just go ahead and take seven rounds and lay them out. This right. is not wrong based on the doctrine of the time. And in fact, the cartridge boxes were sort of designed to do this. You'd set them there and they'd be like a little tray of ammunition. I don't have that, so I'm just gonna have some loose ammunition on the, on the ground here. That's what we got here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we got seven rounds loose, and I got my cartridge belt here in case I have a mishap. And let's go ahead and get in position, use the timer, and see what how fast I go. All right, your time to beat is 26 seconds for the Spencer, or 35 if you can beat your own time prone. Are you ready? I am ready. Stand by. Oh, man, that hurts. That's looking faster. Recoil is fierce. What's the time? You sure you want to know? Yes. 27.54. 27.54. I'm only one second away from your Spencer run. Yeah. This is getting interesting. Okay, so the natural question that's going to come up at this point is, was the trapdoor faster because Carl's been shooting trapdoors for a very long time and I haven't been. So we're going to find out. We're going to swap guns. I have had approximately the same amount of training with the spent, with the, the trapdoor now as a typical cavalryman, which is to say I hand cycled about five rounds through it. So um, let's see what happens. Be shooting out of a cartridge belt. Start with a hammer down. Go to low ready. All right, I'm ready. Stand by. That's not a good way to start. Try actually hit it. You want me to do one extra round to make up for the miss? Nope, just keep going. Seven fifty. So I'm a little slower than you. So training does matter because the repeater was easier for you with less training. Not that much easier though. Your time was 35 with the trapdoor. Oh, good point. Standing. Yeah, it was. So skill plays a factor, but not a huge one in this experiment. Fascinating. All right, let's see how you do with the uh, Spencer. All right. Okay, my turn to use the repeater versus the uh, single shot trapdoor. Go ahead and load these seven rounds. Um, obviously, this is not something you would do under stress. No. 
No, but the ability sure. to go to single shot mitigates that. Yeah, it really does. It turns this into a trapdoor. Yeah, in a way. Yeah, it kind of does, which is cool. And you can kind of see how this stuff turned into like magazine cutoffs and stuff in World War One, can't you? Exactly. There's yeah. an actual like a genetic lineage. Yeah. Um, and just being able to conserve ammunition, which is a real thing on the frontier. Yes, it is. So, but again, we're here about the actual combat combat efficiency, not necessarily right. supply lines. Yep. Well, I'm curious to see if you can shoot this. How how much faster you can shoot this than I did? Yeah, because I was at 35 or ish. You were uh, with the trapdoor. You were at 35. Yep. And I was 27 with this standing. Let's see what happens. All right. All right. Are you ready? I am ready. Stand by. Impressive. 1878. So I went from 35 to 18. Yeah. So there is a there there which is skill based. So someone, yeah. I'm not trying to deprecate no. your skill. No, practice with the Spencer, uh, better gun handling in general. You've got more, you've got more uh, opportunity to improve with the repeater than you do with the trapdoor. Yeah, I think that if you're, if you get to the optimal efficiency with the trapdoor, you still could not get to that right. based on skill set. Now here in reality, like you said, when you use the trapdoor, you had about as much training on it as the average cavalryman. The reality is the ability to leverage that mechanical benefit is diminished by the fact that the ability to train people to get to that capability wasn't there. And I can absolutely, uh, the more we handle this and the more we shoot the Spencer, the more I can see why the army would want something different. That is a finicky gun. It is. You know, you can see me bobbling with it. Yeah. And this is with a gun that's effectively brand new. It's in great shape. It's made, it's modern made. All the parts in there are great. And yet, you took an original one of these and you take it out on the frontier for months at a time, how much on there can break that can be fixed by whoever Private Snuffy assigned to be armorer in the wagon train is? Right. You know, boy, because it doesn't matter how much faster it is if it breaks and now it doesn't work, you're better off with a single shot. You know, we see some, we kind of see something here that's similar to the AK versus the AR in one way. Yeah. An AK, pretty much, if something malfunctions, pull the magazine, run the action, put in the magazine, charge the gun. Yeah. With the trapdoor Springfield, there's only really two st couple states. Empty, loaded, or a cartridge did not extract. Yeah. Now, people are going to say, oh, but the cartridge is frequently did not extract. That's not as big of an issue as people have made it out to be. Well, it's also not true so much. Yeah. Um, the, uh, there is a kernel of truth to that, mm -hmm. but it's vastly overstated. Yep. And largely, the extraction... So if we look at uh, Little Bighorn, yep. greasy grass... Yep. Uh, there was some archaeological work done there that found, first off, found that not nearly as many uh, cartridges that showed knife marks, like mm -hmm. where you had to pull out your knife and pry the case out. And the ones that they did find, a lot of them were actually 4570 cases fired in 5070 carbines. Which is the opposite side of the conflict, probably. Right. If they were captured guns, captured ammo, and guys who just were using the wrong ammo in the guns, that's a situation where okay, am I really going to try and design a gun so that it works perfectly with the wrong ammo? You know, that's not something you can effectively hold against the design, and certainly the U.S. cavalry would not have been in that position. There's a couple other things to think about when we talked about the absolute lack of ability to train these guys. Mm -hmm. So like I said, there's three states of the, tra the trapdoor, loaded, unloaded, or jammed, mm -hmm. and jamming is literally use a knife to pry it out. Yeah. That's, that's the clearing malfunction Just drill. Plop. Yeah. This has many potential malfunction oh, drills. Okay. This has the type seven and a half or whatever, right? So you could have a problem where the cartridge is a little too long or a little too short and it won't feed. You can, you can run into a problem. We have one in the chamber, one sort of on a ramp, and this thing becomes a cluster. Yeah. You literally are done, like transition to pistol. Yeah. So while this is running optimally, yeah, 18 seconds is a big difference in time. But if any malfunction occurs, so you now have another iteration of training cycles necessary with your under-trained troopers on how to handle the types of malfunctions that this gun might incur that the Traptor would not. Right. So the other thing I would say about that is from a, I'd say from a gamer perspective, but also a combat perspective, because a combat is nothing more than a two-way combat game, <laughs> or range, and time matters. Uh -huh. The ability to stay on target with this was better. So because of the lower recoil, hmm, intermediate yeah. cartridge recoil, when you pull the trigger on this, your whole world, you don't just kind of lose it. Right. You can kind of run the action, get back, and you can try to get another hit. The trap door, and you just fired it. Mm -hmm. Once you fire that gun, eh, there's a lot going on there. It's with the the cavalry loads, with the 45-55 loads. The recoil's not bad standing, although it's pretty harsh prone. Mm -hmm. um, 
but you absolutely get a lot more jump and you definitely have to reacquire your target in a way that you don't with this. Not as much. So that's so. A, that's, but again, the training, the issues that come around with that are a whole other thing. Yeah. You know, another thing people are going to bring up uh, watching this video is they're going, well, what about gaming it where you put rounds between your fingers yeah. and rounds between these fingers? We can try that. Maybe we'll do that for the end after the credits. But I'm going to go ahead and tell you that if you were a sergeant in the field and you saw your troopers doing that, I have a feeling they're going to whack, your, whack you with a ruler a little bit. Because that that's a, is going to result in cartridges dropped on the ground. It is. It's something you can do. It's kind of a gee whiz thing, but it's not something that you would have really seen in practice. Exhibition shooting. Exactly. Yeah. And maybe at a match, something like that. But in combat, the chances of more of those rounds being in the deck than in the gun are high. And in fact, many of these battlefields we look at today, the amount of just lost ammunition strewn about, just from even just trying to single load, is immense. Lots yeah. of live cartridges all over greasy grass yep. or other similar battlefields. Stress goes up, stuff gets dropped. We'd see the same thing today if guys were loading magazines from boxes of loose ammo while in combat. Yeah, while taking heat. Yeah. That same exact situation. I kind of think this is pretty conclusive. I think the reality is here that when you compare the Spencer to the Henry, the Henry was overwhelmingly effective. Yeah. When you compare this to the trapdoor, this gets much more dubious. It does, but I think it's very it's, it's very easy to see now why the cavalry was willing uh, to go back to the trapdoor. In fact, it, it's not a lot of people would look at that and say it's such an obviously idiotic change, but it really isn't. I think it's a it's a change you may or may not necessarily agree with, but there was there were reasons for it, and they're justifiable reasons. I'm going to say something I would almost never say. I think in this instance, they got they made the right call. Yeah, I think they really did. When you're on the frontier, you need a gun that's just going to work. Yep. You need supply lines and the power of it a little bit better. That's not the end of the world. And boy, you know, there is a lot of. We, we treat our military very respectfully today. That was not the case 150 years ago. So Soldiering back then was bottom of the bunk. Yeah you, yeah, you joined the army because you couldn't get a job doing anything else. You were a criminal and no one else would have you. I mean, the army was not a particularly respectable career in the 1870s, 1880s. There definitely were people that were. Oh, sure. Let's not, let's not paint That's the broad true. brush. That's However, true. if you were sent off to fight on the frontier, there was a good chance you may not have been optimal. Not cream of the crop. For some reason. Yeah. And, yep. and that, you know, this is a horrible thing, but here's the truth of it. The reality is, why did you see, where did you see the Buffalo soldiers being deployed? Out in the frontier. Yeah. Because they were, not because they were lesser, but because they were considered lesser. Yeah. Same exact mindset. Yep. So the amount of training, all that stuff goes into that. So even if you have good guys in the army, which there certainly were some of, mm -hmm. uh, the army has to plan around lowest common denominator. Yep. And the lowest common denominator in the 1880s in the U.S. Cavalry was pretty low. If you were to send me off and you said you have to take the Spencer or that trapdoor and you have to live for a month out in the desert with one of those two guns, personally, I'd take the trapdoor. Yeah, me too. I would take the trapdoor. But if you said, can you, do you want the trapdoor or the Henry? I'd take the Henry. Probably. Yeah. If you upped it from the Henry to like the 66, mm. then I'd be with you. I think as you guys continue to watch the What If Lever Gun Project, it's going to be really interesting because we're going to touch under the idea of combined arms. Yeah. And we're going to have single shots along with DMRs, along with lever guns. And if you employed them together as a unit, that's when things get really interesting. Yes, it is. So, so stay tuned for future lever gun projects. Guys, if you like this kind of stuff, please consider supporting us on Patreon. It is Patreon only that keeps In Range alive. We are completely crowdfunded. No monetization from anywhere else. It's you, the viewer, that keeps stuff like this on the internet. We're entirely decentralized. You can find all of our distribution points at inrange.tv. Stay tuned after the credits to watch me screw up trying to game my uh, single shot <laughs> trapdoor. All right, so this is what I was trying to say. I'm going to try to game this up. You know, honestly, I've not been ever very good at this. I tend to just drop stuff, and that's just trying to do it on the range. But as you can see, we've got what we got here, four rounds. I'm going to try and do seven, which is what we did earlier. we got four rounds here. I have one in my hand. Maybe I'll put another one. Well, let's see if I could do that. This is, well, you know what? <laughs> let's game it up. You want me to time you? Yeah. All right. Mm. Mm. Lead in my mouth. Lead. Yummy. Yeah. All right, so I've got four, five, six, and one from the belt. This is, I'm probably going to drop them all. It's going to be <laughs> hilarious. So let's go ahead and give it a whirl. All right, are you ready? Yeah. Stand by. Uh oh. Uh oh. More. 
Come on. <gasps> 34 seconds exact. 34 seconds, and when I did it from the belt, it was 35. Yeah. There's a lot of fumbling because half my time was spent trying not to drop the stuff between my fingers. Yeah. Doesn't work. Never mind. Maybe you could get really good at that, but you're certainly not doing that in combat. No. Well, at least the question's been answered. We don't have to read it in the comments below unless you didn't watch the whole video and put the comment already. Thanks. <laughs>